Today we are going to perform an autopsy on Oklahoma's game against Alabama and really the 2018 season and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, Sports related, we have a good time. And today, we're going to perform an autopsy on the 2018 season, as well as the most recent shellacking by the Alabama Crimson Tide. So, after a night, really, and I'm sure that we'll do this throughout the rest of the spring and into the 2019 season to begin with, we're really going to have to just take a really hard look at what Oklahoma was good at, what Oklahoma was bad at, and see what we can fix, man, because look, we could be very, very simple and very, very smart about saying that the offense was really good and the defense was really bad. But what we learned and learned time and time again in the three college football playoff appearances that Oklahoma has made is the offense is just fine. The offense is going to score points, even against a vaunted Alabama team, perhaps the best Alabama team that Nick Saban has ever fielded. The offense still put up 34 points. The problem with that, as we all know, is that the defense gave up 45. Now, I understand Alabama was the second best offense in college football this season. Matter of fact, if you looked at scoring per game, Oklahoma ranked one, Alabama ranked two, and Alabama got close to their average of 47 points a game, and Oklahoma was 15 and a half points off of their 49 and a half a game. But be that as it may, you did not expect both of those teams to necessarily hit their averages unless you did, in which case you expected a basketball game where somebody was going to win something like 72 to 66, which would have favored Oklahoma. But what most people knew that have been college football at any length, casual fan or diehard aficionado, is that defense was really going to be the difference because Alabama's defense was good, and Oklahoma's defense was the actual worst. And it wasn't even close. The way that Quinnen Miller and Isaiah Bugs and Christian Miller were able to just impose their will on Oklahoma's offensive line, play after play after play, was so demoralizing that being down 28-0, you started to see Drew Samia catch some static. That Ben Powers got angry. That Bobby Evans decided that now was the time to pick up personal foul calls. You also saw Kyler Murray going out of his way to try to calm those dudes down. Lincoln Riley having a one-on-one -on -one heart to heart with Drew Samia, who we know he'll lose his temper a little bit. And I'm sure Bill Beatonbow will have a lot to say about how his boys conducted themselves throughout that game. But more than that, you couldn't stop Isaiah Bugs. You couldn't stop Quentin Miller. You couldn't stop Christian Miller. Those dudes got everything they wanted and then some. By the time Quentin Miller got his dirty play where he not only shoved Kyler Murray into the brown, but took off his helmet, yeah, you could have got a flag. It would have been a righteous flag. And it would kind of could have been the flag that gets him ejected. And what would it have changed? On the field, what would it have changed? Nothing. Because Alabama was just that stacked on the defensive line, that stacked at corner, at safety, and at linebacker. As great as C.D. Lamb's crackback block was against Mac Wilson, at the end of the day... Alabama's defense showed up, and Oklahoma's defense did not. And that's really the story of the 2018 season. As good as the offense is, and it is historically good, yards per play, points per game, the amount of plays it takes them to score, being the most efficient college football offense ever, matters for not if you're giving up more points than the other team. Now, I know that Oklahoma coming into Alabama gave up 32 a game, 37 plus over the last six games since Ruffin McNeil was in charge. But you need to get that number closer to 20, closer to 17, because when you're talking about balance and you're talking about teams that put together seasons for which they can be counted on to be really competing for real for national championships, you're talking about teams like Alabama, like Clemson, like Georgia, who can hold teams to under three touchdowns a game. You're talking about teams that have players on their defensive line that win position awards, like the Outland Trophy went to Quentin Miller at Alabama, like the Jim Thorpe Award went to DeAndre Baker at Georgia, like Christian Wilkins at 
Clemson is considered the best player on a loaded Clemson team that includes the future 2021 overall number one pick in the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, if you ask anybody. And yet, we were talking about Christian Wilkins being the best player. And we're talking about Dexter Lawrence being a big loss. Turns out it wasn't. Turns out Austin Bryant's pretty good coming off the edge. Turns out Albert Huggins was pretty good just planting Ian Book on his back because Brent Venables built his defense like Alabama built its defense like Georgia built its defense from the defensive line back. The fact that Clemson could rotate in six, seven dudes on its defensive line that everybody talks about will go in the first or second round is ridiculous, but it's also the kind of thing that has taken them from the kind of team that got torched by West Virginia to the kind of team that can be counted on to not only make college football playoffs now, but win national titles. This is the game coming up, Alabama and Clemson, that most people in August would have said is going to happen. Because as good as Oklahoma was, as good as Georgia was, as good as LSU was, as good as Ohio State, Notre Dame, go down the list. Everybody knew that Alabama and Clemson were a cut above because they could do what Oklahoma could do offensively and they could do what each other could do defensively. Georgia disqualified itself by taking a bad loss to LSU and another loss in the SEC championship game. Can't have two losses to make the 14 playoff. Notre Dame was who we all thought they were. Just UCF without the Disney World. Northern UCF, if you will, right? Just a, a moneyed version of UCF with a great player at defensive back in Julian Love, pretty good quarterback, great running back, and big, strong, tall wideouts and a great guy on the defensive line in Jerry Tillery. But outside of that, you saw Clemson take him apart. You saw Trevor Lawrence take him apart. And you saw that the quarterback play for both Alabama and Oklahoma, as well as Clemson, was elite. It was good. Nobody threw a pick of those dudes, man. You know, and that's something else that doesn't need to be glossed over, that Oklahoma does that really well because Lincoln Riley's the offensive coordinator and the head coach. But now that man needs to go and hire a defensive coordinator. And not just any defensive coordinator. He needs to go get the kind of defensive coordinator that will turn our heads. Pete Golding is such a guy. Alex Grinch is such a guy. Jimmy Lake at Washington is such a guy. There are men out there for which he could do it. I just don't necessarily see anybody that wants to move right now because all the moving and shaking has been done. Folks who wanted to bring up Brian Brown at Appalachia State, he took the job at Louisville. Dave Aranda, LSU, is the highest paid assistant in college football. Brent Venables is not leaving for anything short of his own country. Anybody that you want has a head coaching gig or is very happy where they are, which means that you're going to have to convince Joe C. to back the truck up money to Pete Golding or even to Alex Grinch at this point, or you're looking at Bob Diaco because the best I can tell right now, the nibbles on the defensive coordinator position at Oklahoma aren't exactly what you would want them to be. You would like to have somebody who's young and hungry come in and say, I can be the guy who turns this defense into a top 25 defense, who can do what Pete Golding did to UTSA, which is take them from actual bad to actual great. And say that, hey man, if you just let me do what I need to do on the defense, you won't have to worry about it ever again. And then you could put out a defense that not only competes for championships, but it's not even close in the Big 12. And that's kind of the other part of this that gets glossed over. One of the reasons the SEC gets taken more seriously than other conferences is because their iron sharpens its iron. Okay? Yeah, we make fun of them for beating up on each other. But clearly Alabama's schedule prepared them for the college football playoff. I don't like it. I don't like that they can schedule Citadel and get away with it. I don't like that they can schedule Arkansas State and get away with it. I don't like that they can schedule Louisiana and get away with it. But at the end of the day, that team was actually ready to beat up on Oklahoma and did. Whereas if you looked at Oklahoma's schedule, Texas, Tech's offense, Oklahoma State's offense, Kansas, you know, I mean, if you're looking at teams that should be matching Oklahoma, you don't think that Texas should be in the same hemisphere, really, as Oklahoma, and yet they are. They're playing in a Sugar Bowl, you know, and we want to say that the Big 12 is rising up when really it's Oklahoma that's rising and forcing the other teams to rise, and you need a worthy league schedule for Oklahoma, and that's difficult, 
in the Big 12 because you're asking the entire conference to make the leaps and bounds that Oklahoma has, and they actually haven't. They just haven't, and they won't. So maybe the answer is for Oklahoma to join the SEC like a lot of folks want it to, or even the Big 10. But then you can make the same argument for the Big 10 that you can make for the Big 12, which is that it's completely top-heavy and that those teams don't prepare you to win championships. Ohio State, maybe. But Michigan, kind of like Texas, right? Penn State, kind of like Texas, right? I mean, it's just not really feasible to think that you're going to get the kind of competition in this league that you need to win conference championships. So you're going to have to do it with great defensive coordinator and great defensive talent and great defensive recruits. But you're going to have to do it by turning the guys that you have today into world beaters and all-stars. Alabama didn't get to be Alabama overnight. Nick Saban took what he had, turned it into the 2009 national title team, and now they're 10 years ahead of everybody. That's why they succeed. That's why they are compared to pro teams year in and year out. Because he took what he had and he built on it. He had hired a great guy, Kirby Smart, who is this guy for nearly 10 years. At Oklahoma, you just ain't had that. Bob thought he had it when Mike Stoops didn't. Thought we had it with Brent Venables. Kind of did, kind of didn't. And now Lincoln Riley has to go and find his guy to get the defense in order. Because until the defense gets in order, we can win all the conference championships and we can go back to back to back to back. But until that thing is fixed, Oklahoma's going to continue to make college football playoffs and continue to get roasted in the semifinal. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.